All right, guys, good morning and welcome back to my channel. Today's video was actually a requested video and I was kind of, I had a little bit of writer's block, so to speak. I wasn't really sure what kind of video I wanted to make this week for you guys. Um, and I actually just had somebody write me this morning and say, can you please make a video on getting over a breakup? And that's not the first time I've had a person ask me about a video on tips for getting over a breakup. So it's not that I'm some kind of a relationship expert or anything like that, but I do have some years of experience under my belt. Um, and I've definitely been there. I have experienced heartbreak and I have experienced what it's like to try to get over somebody and to try to move on from a relationship, even if it was necessary, even if you yourself were the person who broke up with the person, it can still be difficult to create a new life for yourself and create a new routine and accept the fact that this is your new norm and you're no longer with that person. And you can feel all kinds of emotions. You can feel sadness, depression, despair, loneliness. Uh, you can feel like your life is pretty much over, like you've ruined your life somehow by letting go of this so-called amazing thing that you had. And so today's video is going to be tips on getting over a breakup. And I have used these tips before myself, you guys, so I know that they do help and they do work. And these are kind of just things I've learned over the years. Um, so I hope that some of these tips are helpful for you guys. Now, as usual, I do not sit down in front of the camera, you guys, so you're not going to be able to look at me while you hear these tips. I will put something pretty in the background for you, and this is more or less something you can just listen to. So maybe you can listen to it while you're working out, while you're cleaning the house, while you're driving, before you go to sleep at night. It's always a good idea to fill your mind with positive things before you go to bed. Just a little tip. With that out of the way, you guys, let's get into these tips for getting over a breakup. Okay, so tip number one, this is the first, I'm just going in order of what popped into my mind, not necessarily the best to the worst. Okay, tip number one, you have to remove reminders of that person from your home and from your surroundings. This is going to sound very obvious, but don't hang on to little souvenirs. You know, if it was a t-shirt that they left at your home, if it was a perfume that you wore when you went out on dates with them, if it was, um, I don't know something they bought you or something you shared together, like you always shared, you always had maybe wine together or something. Maybe you need to pass on those two wine glasses, you know, donate them to a secondhand store, give them away to a friend or family member. You don't need to be reminded of this person every time you open your cupboard. So remove reminders of that person from your home. Basically any little artifacts, any little souvenirs, any little anything, even if it was, for example, a dress that you wore with them to a special event, a special dinner. And every time you look at that dress, you feel sad because it reminds you of that special time with that person, it's okay to donate that item, you know, get those things out of the house. You need to go through your home and go through your life and make your life conducive to you and your life after this person, not tons of little ghosts all over the room and all over your house, reminding you of this relationship, reminding you of this person, because it's only going to make you feel sad and unhappy. Every time you look at that item, it's going to be a reminder and it's probably going to make you cry. <laughs> Been there, done that, you guys. So you need to remove reminders of this person from your home and from in your space. So look around, take a walk through um, that as you're going through your day to day, if you notice something that reminds you of this person, see if you can get rid of it ASAP without being obviously environmentally irresponsible and throwing everything in the trash, which you might feel like doing. And maybe you need to do that. Maybe you need to take a baseball bat and you need to break those wine glasses, <laughs> whatever it is that you need to do. Remove reminders of this person from your home. Tip number two is very similar, and this is to change your ringtone and your text tones. Um, this is a really, really helpful one because I don't know if you're anything like me, but I sometimes will give certain ringtones to certain people. And if you have a specific ringtone that every time your phone goes off, it reminds you of that person or you think it's that person, maybe you need to change all the ringtones on your phone. Change it so that you hear this new tone so that no matter who's texting you, all the tones are the same. You have to decondition yourself a little bit. Switch up your ringtone so that when it rings, your brain doesn't automatically condition you to think of that person. The power of conditioning, you guys, it's real. So yeah, go through your phone and switch up your tones. Better yet, switch up everything. Switch up everything you can that was the way it was when you were with that person, the background on your phone, maybe even the font that you use. Um, rearrange your house a little bit. Rearrange your living room. Get yourself some new pillows. Maybe switch up the bedding on your bed, um, especially if you guys were staying in each other's houses. That might be really important. Rearrange your bedroom. You know, you have to uh, look at these parts of your life and just switch things up so that everything is a little different and there's no more conditioning and there's no more little triggers all day, every day as you're going about doing things. But the most important one that I think is so helpful is the ring and the text tone because we are kind of addicted to our phones these days. We're kind of attached to our phones and texting is something that you likely did with this person throughout the day. 
Same thing goes for Snapchat. I don't have Snapchat, so I don't even know how it works. But if it was me, I would just probably take a Snapchat break because I wouldn't want to open up my phone or see notifications or see whatever and automatically be conditioned to think it was that person. All right, number three is to change your surroundings. I already talked about this a little bit in step number two, but it goes a little bit further. So for example, if you guys went to the same gym together, maybe you wanna get a different gym membership. Just try doing different things in your day-to-day life that are a little bit different from what you did with that person. Um, That's really not much else to say about it than that, Um, but just think about the things in your day-to-day surroundings, your day-to-day life. Maybe you would always go to a certain Starbucks and grab a coffee. Maybe now you start going to a different Starbucks. Maybe you start going to a totally new cafe. So think about those little things. Write these things down. It's going to empower you, and it's going to make you feel like you're doing something productive and progressive, and even though you still might be feeling very heartbroken and very sad, Just the simple act that you're taking these active steps toward improving your life and better and moving forward is going to make you feel a little bit better. All right, number four I touched on before I got into these tips, and this is about social media. So remove them from social media, or better yet, as I so often advocate, leave Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat altogether. The last thing you need is photos of mutual friends popping up or other things that are reminding you of that person. The last thing you need is their picture popping up on your profile. And you certainly don't need to be creeping people. Like you don't need to be creeping to see what are they up to. What's their profile picture now? Have they posted photos of like... Honestly, you guys, this whole thing boggles my mind and is so insanely ridiculous. I left Facebook in 2020. I kind of dabbled with it on and off until I was able to finally kick it to the curb and I haven't gone back and I don't regret it. Um, But this world of this artificial world of social media and Facebook and that this is the way that we're supposed to be in contact with people is so insane to me. That's a topic for another video, but either leave your social media is all together, or at least at the very least, block or restrict or whatever you have to do, these people, their family members, mutual friends, whatever you have to do, it's not rude. It's not rude to block people for your mental health. Yeah, you don't need them being able to send you cute little memes or cute little whatever. Uh, You don't need to see them liking good photos. Like, no, you don't need that. Sorry to sound harsh, you guys, but it's ridiculous. You do not need the validation and likes from, especially from someone that you broke up with. It might give you this this, um, false sense of like, oh my gosh, they still care about me. Like, no, sorry to be harsh, you guys, but no, social media is ridiculous. The way that we use social media is ridiculous. And this is all nonsense and we don't need it. My point is social media is not helpful in most cases but especially not when you're going through a breakup. So yeah, block this person, remove them, restrict them. And I would say even try even try to get rid of get off social media altogether. You will be surprised how much your life improves when you are not glued to Facebook, when you are not sitting there scrolling the feed and absorbing all of this mindless nonsense of like so and so's trip to Thailand and what somebody ate for lunch and this dumb news story that this person's sharing and little arguments over COVID or whatever. Your life will improve when you don't sit there and mindlessly absorb that crap all day. That is not what you were meant for. You can put time into yourself. You can better yourself. You can build something for yourself. You can have other hobbies. You can start going to the gym. Um, You can build real relationships with people. You can start using social media to improve your life. Listening to good content, listening to good podcasts, watching YouTube videos that uplift you, Um, following certain accounts, maybe on Instagram, of people that uplift you somehow or they add value to your life or their content inspires you. That's a good way that you can use social media. Do not become a mindless sponge operating on default, absorbing shit all day. Don't be that person. So block and delete the people that you are trying to remove from your life, especially somebody you have broken up with. Do not give them as well. Think about it this way too. Don't give them the satisfaction of being able to creep you back, quote unquote. This whole idea of creeping is so weird to me, by the way. Like we have nothing better to do, but creep people. And don't give them the satisfaction of being able to click on your picture and see what you're up to. Like, no. And also don't start the toxic, ridiculous, narcissistic, childish behavior of posting things you're doing to quote unquote, get back at them or get back to them. You don't need to post pictures of you having fun with some other person. It's just a mindless, ridiculous game. Don't do that. Focus on yourself, yes. Move forward, yes. But don't do those things so that you can just put it in their face on social media. Don't play that ridiculous game, you guys. You are better than that. You don't need that. And they're going to be expecting that. And they're going to sit there and be scoffing at it. And it's just a whole toxic, negative world that you don't need. Life is just better, you guys, when you just don't care what other people think and you and you quit posting for other people. Like Do things for you and, and you don't need to post it all either. 
All right, tip number five is to delete their number from your phone. And if you have it memorized, do whatever you have to do not to use it. Do not respond to any messages that you get and also fight the urge to message the person because every time you see a message from them pop up on your phone or every time you see a red receipt, it's going to give you this little false sense of hope or happiness or this little false sense of security, like somehow they still care about you or somehow you're actually not broken up or you have this little connection to them still. And it's not a healthy way to try to move past somebody. Um, Um, It plays games with your mind, and even if you're the person who did the breaking up, you still need to distance yourself from the person. Because it can be difficult not to message somebody or tell them how much you miss them or tell them how much you love them or care about them, it can be helpful to keep track on a calendar or in a journal of the number of days that have passed without communicating with that person. So think of it as an accomplishment. Once you've gone a full 24-hour period without messaging that person or responding to a message or hopefully you have them blocked, write about it in your journal. Just put, you know, day number one, whatever, September 15th, 2023, did not contact this person and then continue doing that or mark it on a calendar, put little X's or yellow out the days with a highlighter. Every day that goes by that you did not talk to that person, not only, not only is it going to feel like a personal accomplishment for you, it's going to be a little bit of a dopamine hit. It's going to propel you forward and make you feel good. Like, okay, I'm moving on. I don't need that person. I didn't talk to them. Yes, it's going to suck. It's going to feel sad. You're not going to not feel sad. I'm not saying that this is not going to be still heartbreaking or that you're not going to be upset or miss them and stuff. Of course you will. But this is just an easy, this is just kind of a helpful way for you to keep track of that you are moving on, that you're not talking to them. And it's going to give you this reinforced motivation. And after three or four or five weeks, you're probably going to notice that you miss them a lot less and you don't need to worry so much about putting X's on your calendar or keeping track in a journal because you will have already started focusing on other things. Um, You're starting to get used to a new life without them. It's going to get easier and easier all the time. Number six is to start filling your time doing things with yourself and for yourself and also with other people. But no matter how painful it is, you have to force yourself to get up and do things for yourself, things that are going to improve your life, things that are just for you, um, and also to get your mind off of things as well. Will it always be enjoyable and happy and wonderful when you try to go to the gym you know, without that person when you were used to going there with them? Will it be happy and joyous and wonderful to get dressed up and go out with some friends when you're used to maybe going out with that person or seeing that person when you go out or getting together with them after you've been out with your friends? Of course not. You're going to be a little bit sad. There's going to be lots of times you're going to go home and you're still going to be upset and you're going to probably cry because you're used to going home and texting them or having them come over or you going to their place or something like that. So of course it's going to be hard, but time will heal that. The more time that passes, the less hard it is going to be. And if you can help it, avoid doing things like driving past their house or driving through their area of town or passing through their favorite hangouts or their coffee shops or whatever. Um, But you have to start doing things for yourself. You cannot just sit around all day wallowing in despair. You might do that a little bit. You might feel like doing that a little bit, but at some point you have to wipe those tears away sniffle a little bit. You might even cry in your car as you're going to the gym. That's okay. Get up and go do those things for yourself. Push yourself through it. Yeah, it's going to suck. You might sit there. You might, you might listen to Adele all day and and cry and that's okay. I'm going to talk about going through the steps of grief here in a moment, but you have to do things for yourself because one thing that I have learned in my short time here on earth is that if there's anything that heals almost anything, It's time, but in order to get through that time, you cannot just sit there and wallow. You have to get up and move and do things to the best of your ability. You know, pick up some shifts at work, work more hours if you need to, go have coffee with your mom, do whatever it is that you have to do to fill your time. Do not sit at home by yourself, sad. Get up and do things. Number seven is to be the strong one. And the funny thing about breakups is that when the person who is broken up with, when they start to focus on themselves and improve their lives, whether it's focusing on studies, getting more in shape, enjoying hobbies, taking up a sport, getting hair extensions, doing something for yourself, um, doing anything else that betters your life, you actually become more attractive. And the person that you left has a high chance of regretting letting you go or missing you and trying to quote unquote crawl back or come back or get in touch with you. I'm not saying that you should use this as a tactic to try to get them back. That's not why you're doing things. You're doing things for yourself to better yourself, to better your life and to move forward. And depending on how old you are, the type of dating history that you have, there could be lots of reasons that somebody might try to come back to you. They might just be a guy wanting what many guys want. And maybe that was something that you gave them before. So now they think they can have it again. So they're going to message you and try to get it again. 
or maybe it was actually a really wonderful relationship and they're actually realizing, you know, maybe they, maybe you guys shouldn't end at things. Maybe the grass isn't greener on the other side. No matter what, you are going to end up looking more attractive to that person because when somebody focuses on themselves and their confidence increases and they're improving their life, as you do those things, you will become more attractive naturally to everybody around you, including possibly the person who you broke up with or the person who broke up with you. So don't be surprised when they try to reach out to you or rekindle something with you or get back in touch with you. Remember that not all relationships are worth rekindling and that's for you to decide. This isn't about like, should you get back with them or how to get back with someone? That's not what it's about. It's about being the strong one and bettering yourself and just knowing that this will probably, they will notice but continue to be the strong person. So the double-edged sword here is that not only will you grow as a person and become happier and more well-rounded and fulfilled, but ironically, that person will also kind of get a slap in the face as if to say, look at what you left behind or look at what you gave up. To be clear, you are not supposed to be doing this to get them back. They should have already seen your value beforehand. So keep improving yourself and keep creating a life for yourself that is meaningful for you and you'll eventually attract the right person into your life. Whether that's them, again, another day, another time, another season, perhaps it is. Sometimes people, you know, end relationships or they're not sure if it's going to work out for whatever reason, then they do get back together. And that's wonderful if that's the person you're meant to be with. But a lot of times that's not the person you're meant to be with. The ultimate revenge, the ultimate comeback is just to focus on yourself essentially. And it will be a comeback and it will be revenge because the last thing you want to do is for them to be seeing you sitting around wallowing because they were the best thing in your life. You don't want to give them the satisfaction of seeing you sitting around wallowing in despair because you're no longer with this person. Um, yeah. So number seven is to be the strong one. Number eight is to continue on being the strong one. For example, if you share a university class together so you can't avoid this person completely, just be unbothered. If you work in the same place, if you frequent the same place, maybe it's going to be impossible to completely ignore this person depending on your age and what you're doing and all of that kind of stuff. So don't be rude. Don't go out of your way to show them that you're better than them, that you're moving on, that you're trying to avoid them. Just be unbothered. No side glances, no unnecessary communication. No posting stupid photos on Facebook and hoping that they're going to see it and all that stuff. No downloading apps so that you can track if they're trying to look you up. Remember that you are living your life for you and there are billions of people on this planet. So no messages, no Facebook, no smiling at them, none of that stuff. Focus on life for you. And remind yourself that there are billions of people on this planet. That was one person out of many. It does not mean that you have lost the person for you. You just lost one person and that's okay. There are lots of others out there. Number nine is to either lean into a family member, a close friend, or a therapist if you need to, or even just journal or pray or talk to God if that's something that works better for you. Um, For me, I talk to my mom or I journal or I... I kind of, in a sense, pray or talk to God, I guess. I I talk through my thoughts with myself. I work through my thoughts with myself a lot. And you may need to do some reframing of your thoughts around the breakup. For example, if you think you are unlovable or there's something wrong with you, maybe you need to explore those feelings and those thoughts a little bit more and reframe how you feel. That's just one example. But being able to work through your thoughts with somebody can be hugely valuable because you're going to feel vulnerable. You're going to feel sad and you're probably going to want to pour out your heart to somebody. And if that happens to be just you sitting in your bedroom crying and working through your thoughts out loud, sometimes you do have to verbalize how you're feeling, whether it's writing it down or speaking it aloud to somebody. Um, Yeah. And other things that can help is also consuming helpful content. There are lots of videos out there on YouTube about getting over breakups. There's lots of books out there about getting over breakups. Just indulge yourself in good, helpful content. Um, Obviously, you're not the first person to go through something like this, and this might not be the last time you have to go through something like this. So it's important for you to know that there are resources out there to help you. And it's also important to work through your thoughts. Not, as I said, not just sitting there wallowing in despair, feeling like your life is over. Going to a therapist can be really helpful because those people are trained to help you work through your thoughts and you can do a little bit of cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, So for example, if you're thinking things like my life is over, this person was the love of my life. That's your thought. The feeling of course is despair, sadness, loneliness, grief, depression. You can maybe reframe that thought to, I feel very sad because I love that person, but it doesn't mean my life is over. There are a lot of other people out there and I can meet somebody else in the future and it's okay for me to be sad in the meantime. That's normal. You know, that's a healthier way to look at it than my life is over. What's the point of living? Blah, 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 all that stuff. So talking to a therapist, not just somebody who's going to, I don't know. Sometimes there's unhelpful people. (laughs) We'll just put it that way. But sometimes you need to indulge in 
uplifting, good content and a little psychotherapy does not hurt you guys. Don't, don't underestimate the value of a little bit of psychotherapy. And there's lots of resources online for that as well. Number 10 is that it's okay to be sad and depressed and to feel the emotions as you go through it. It's okay to cry like a baby. It's okay to feel your grief and your sadness and your heartbreak. And actually it's kind of essential because you cannot go through and come out on the other side of any sort of grief or crisis in your life without going through the motions. And you will probably feel all of them. Maybe right now you're in the depression stage. I guess it depends on what stage, but I think most people would probably look up a video like this because they're in that depression stage where they're feeling very, very sad and they just want to feel better and they need help. Um, But you're going to go through denial. You're going to go through desperation and bargaining. You're going to go through, you know, trying to figure out if this is something you can fix, maybe even begging the person to take you back. Um, You're going to go through all of those phases. You're going to go through anger, anger, and eventually you're going to find yourself at acceptance. So you do have to get to the lowest point to come out on the other side. You cannot in a healthy way, go from something happening to you that makes you very sad to just being perfectly fine. It doesn't happen like that. You will have to go through the stages. It's healthy to go through the stages. You don't want to suppress your emotions. It's okay to feel your emotions. You have to feel them. If you have to sit there and cry, if you have to sit there and wallow in despair and listen to Adele and just feel terrible for a few days, that's okay. But remember that, yes, you will come out on the other side. That's the important thing is that you have to tell yourself you will come out on the, on the other side. This is not forever. These feelings of depression and grief and sadness and loneliness are not forever. You will come out on the other side. Um, Again, that's where a therapist is important or somebody who cares about you, somebody to talk to who hopefully will tell you those things. But in the meantime, cry if you need to. Cry in between your gym sessions. Cry before you fall asleep at night. Cry before class. Cry after class. Cry if you accidentally see their face pop up somewhere. It's okay to do that. It doesn't mean that it doesn't, it's not wrong and it doesn't mean you're weak. And I think... The thing with people is we are so aware of how bad it feels to feel sad and how bad it feels to feel depressed that we try to avoid those feelings, obviously. We we avoid those feelings. Nobody wants to feel that way. It's kind of like when you have to when you're nauseated and you have to throw up. Well, nobody likes throwing up, but you're not gonna feel better till you do. <laughs> so there's no sense in fighting it. Um it's okay to feel to feel sad and it's okay to cry and it's okay to go through those motions and you actually probably need to to work your way through them um and eventually you won't be crying anymore when something reminds you of them or something happens you're not going to cry you're not going to feel super depressed or sad it'll just be kind of like melancholic maybe even a little bit annoying maybe even like you'll reach a point where you're like oh my god you know and you just push that thought aside or push that person aside um it's going to get to a point where you're over it it still bugs you in some aspect but it's no longer depressing and sad and doesn't make you cry anymore trust me that's how it goes yeah and usually by the time you reach that point where the idea of them is just sort of mildly annoying. You might even get to a point where you like really, really dislike them. And you look back and you think, what was I ever doing with that person? Like, what was I thinking? Wow. Can't believe I cried over that person. Can't believe I shed a tear over that person. So yeah, eventually you'll get to that point. You just have to remind yourself that that's the case and it's okay to cry in the meantime. There's two more tips here. Number 11 is to make a vision board and start some goal setting. So ask yourself what it is that you value most in life and what you want the most out of life. And perhaps that is a wonderful loving partner and to get married and to have a wedding ring and to have a house and a baby together. And that's perfectly fine. Most of us do want that in life. So put that on your board, write that down as one of your goals, one of your dreams, just because it hasn't worked out yet with this other person doesn't mean that that person is not out there for you. Remember, there are billions of people on this planet. That was just one person. Um, So it just means it hasn't happened yet. But making vision boards in the past for me has been hugely beneficial and very helpful for me getting through some hard times. It helps you focus on the beauty that lies ahead and it helps you feel motivated and proactive and productive. And it reminds you of the things you do want out of life. It it helps you to focus on the things you do want out of life, not what you've left behind, not what you've lost, not what is hurting you or bothering you at the moment. It helps you focus on tomorrow. It helps you focus on the future. And you just have to remember as well, if you haven't done any reading about the law of attraction, or if you've not been into the law of attraction or vision boards, something important to know is that you become what you think about and you attract what you think about. 
if you can see it in your mind, you will hold it in your hand, no matter what that is. It's very true. So you have to be focusing on positive things. Um, so make your vision board about things you love, things that make you happy, things that you value, things that you want. Put some big dreams and goals on there that right now might seem kind of like unattainable, out of reach, a little ways away, whatever it is, but start making vision boards and start doing goal setting. Very, very important. It's not only going to help you get your mind off of this breakup, but it's also going to help you focus on what lies ahead and put some belief into yourself that, okay, yes, I, I feel super sad right now, but there is something good out there waiting for me. I know there is, and it doesn't mean you're not going to cry later today. It doesn't mean you're still not going to be sad. <laughs> like I said, it takes time for those emotions to start to dissipate. But yeah, start goal setting and start making a vision board. If you haven't made a vision board, there's lots of videos online about how to make a vision board. I've been making them for about 10 years, I would say, and they have been an amazing tool to help me create the life that I want for myself. Okay, number 12, and this one might be a little bit controversial, and some people are going to say, oh no, you shouldn't have to focus on other people, whatever, but Number 12 is it's okay to sort of fill their space a little bit. You know that old saying, the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else. Don't take it literally. I'm not saying literally. I'm saying sometimes it's okay to feel attractive, to remind yourself that there are other people out there who are interested in you. Remind yourself of all those times that somebody made a pass at you and you ignored them or you looked the other way or turned them down because you were already in a wonderful relationship. So you didn't pursue that person, but those people were out there and those people do exist. It's okay to remind yourself that you are attractive. It's okay to flirt a little bit. Um, if somebody attractive at work or at the gym or wherever sparks up a conversation with you, it's okay to spark up a little conversation and be a little flirtatious or whatever, you know, put your best foot forward. It's okay to remind yourself that in fact, it's very helpful to remind yourself that, hey, you still got it. Like there's people out there. There are billions of people on this planet just to feel like, um, I don't know, just to put yourself out there a little bit, just to see what's out there a little bit. So talk to other people, connect with other people, flirt a little bit if you're in that right mind space. This might not come for a couple of weeks or a month or whatever. Um, and it won't take away your heartache. It doesn't mean you're not going to have moments where you still immensely miss that person. Of course you will. But what it'll do is it'll reinforce on you that this breakup was not the end of the world and that once you've moved on, there are other people out there. Join a dating website if you like. I would advise against Kinder Surprise or whatever that app is called. Lucky for me, you guys, I never dated in the age of Tinder. I can only imagine the horrors of what may have happened had I been on Tinder back in my younger dating years. I feel really bad for people in today's day and age that like the world is so disconnected that we have to meet people on Tinder and hook up culture, all that. I just don't, I can't even, yeah, that's a whole other conversation, but maybe, maybe don't go for Kinder Surprise. Okay. Unless, unless you know how to use it and you can use it in a helpful way. I don't know. I've never been on it. So I don't know, but there's friendship websites out there. There's dating websites out there for people who are in the same shoes as you. There's people out there who maybe just got out of a serious relationship. They're not ready to jump into one again, but they kind of just want to see what's out there. There's believe it or not, there's actually good people out there. They're not all creeps. They're not all stalkers. They're not all super unattractive people with not much to offer who are just hiding behind a keyboard they're not all like that there's a lot of good people out there who are just like you who just ultimately want to meet somebody um, and it can be helpful to put yourself out there get a few profile likes have a couple little harmless conversations you know and maybe even just find somebody that is kind of nice to talk to once in a while um so don't i'm not saying run out there and date somebody else run out there and sleep with someone else please don't run out there and sleep with someone else don't run out there and have a whole bunch of drinks and just go sleep with someone it will not make you feel better the next morning what you should do though is just have conversations have connections and just put yourself out there a little bit be don't don't necessarily be available to date if that's not what you want to do but it's important to get in that frame of mind of like this person was not the be all end all so that's kind of what i'm saying and i think that friendship websites and dating websites can be helpful because in today's day and age it's very hard to meet people it is even if you live in the biggest cities in the world it it can still be very difficult to meet people um, I think it's a catch-22, I will say as a side note, because I live in a small community. So on one hand, living in a small community, there's fewer fish in the pond, right? There's fewer people to meet, less likelihood that you're going to meet somebody who's right for you. However, on the flip side, it's more likely that you're going to run into this person multiple times. It's more likely that you're going to cross paths with them multiple times. Whereas in a huge city, there's tons of people, sure. But what is the likelihood that you're going to see that person at the same at the same place more than once? What is the likelihood that 
you're going to organically bump into that person. I think that's where, because of the way society is and how big cities are and how many people there are, I think that's why there is a place for these sort of like pen pal type pen pal my gosh that dates me it's there's a place for these sort of like dating websites or whatever so I do think that there's a place for you guys like get out there you know it doesn't hurt to look at some cute guy's profile and think oh yeah he's cute you know like whatever just put yourself out there you know it might not happen right away you might have to wait two or three weeks till you're feeling like in that right frame of mind again but it is empowering And that is really it, you guys. Those are my tips for getting over a breakup. Like I said, this video was requested, so I hope that it was helpful to somebody. And remember that your pal Alithia is always here over on Instagram. So if you need somebody to talk to, or it can just be helpful sometimes to say something and have someone hear you. Maybe you don't have a lot of people in your life that are available that you can talk to. I don't know. There's all walks of life. Maybe you don't have many friends or family, or maybe you need somebody You just need to be heard. Sometimes it's important just for you to be heard. You can always feel free to head over and write me on Instagram. I will do my best to get to your message. Instagram is the best place to get a hold of me. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a wonderful day. And remember, time heals just about everything. So give it time.